This video is going to be the first in a three-part series going through the creation of my short film, Snowfall. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it and then come back to this video. This first part is going to be focused on the process I did for modeling as well as how I set up the scene files. Part 2 is going to be on lighting, materials, and rendering, and part 3 is going to be about the compositing and post work that I did for the project. So let's get into it now. The first thing that I'm going to go over is the process for sculpting the character, as well as the other minor characters that appear in the film that are all based on the same geometry. I sculpted the character in Forger, an iPad app that Maxon develops, and then after I finished with the sculpting, I sent that over to Cinema 4D. I remeshed the model to reduce the polygon count to make it easier to rig and animate. For the facial animation, I originally wanted to use Moves by Maxon, which is an app that they have that lets you do facial motion capture, but the process was more complicated than what I wanted to deal with, so I used, ended up just using a pose morph tag and making poses, and then just hand keyframing them. And this tutorial from EJ Hassenfrath on School of Motion, linked in the description, was super helpful for how to set that up. I then used the hair tools to add hair to the character. Um, the material is mostly default, but with a lot of wave and some curl on it. And then I created the clothes by creating an object for the top based on the character's geometry, and then a bunch of layers of, like, discs for the skirt that I then use the cloth tools to simulate for every shot. And I rigged it inside Cinema 4D using the Mixmo rig preset. It's the easiest to use with other mocap files, and it's also pretty easy to work with. Now let's get into how I modeled some of the objects in a few of the shots. In this shot, and in most of the shots, everything that's not a plant was modeled by me. The plants are a mix of Cinema 40's Asset Browser things and Quixel Megascans. These walkways are a pretty good way to show a bunch of the techniques I used in a bunch of different objects for the project. The biggest one is probably the detailing, which I did with a mix of subdividing in the poke polygons command, and then extruding or just like in setting. And here's the rough process they used on like a cube model. I actually created this castle for an earlier version of the project, and I ended up using it in my project for Clint's Moving Meditations Challenge, which I'll link the full project for that in the description. It's made with a lot of the same techniques as the walkways, just with more details. Also, it's on my Gumroad if you want to download it. The couple of castle interior shots were again made with a lot of the same techniques, but I want to highlight a few of them on their own too. These stands for the vases in this office were made in basically the same way as the walkway, and the whole room was basically done this way. And also, part of it was based on the walkway models, just bigger. In the town shots, the buildings were all modeled to be variations on the same thing, so I started with like a base one, and then made more with some variations on them. There was like six or so, and then I cloned them all randomly into a grid. The snow and the ice on the ground was done with a volume builder and volume mesher. So I duplicated the object that I want to put the snow onto, and then I like pushed it up, and then I put that into a volume builder with noise masking out parts of it, and then I put that into a volume mesher and smoothed it out a bit. Other than that, these town scenes are pretty simple, and they were actually the fastest to render. Because the forest shots are mostly assets and like other things, and there's not a ton of modeling in them, I mostly just wanted to go around and show what these scene files were like. The trees are from the asset browser that I exported into Redshift proxies to make them easier to render and work with. Then most of the smaller plants are from Quixel, also converted into proxies, and I also converted the materials into Redshift standard materials. But I'll get into that more in part two. And then they're all cloned randomly onto the ground object, which is modified from a Quixel thing. The cave file is a heavily modified model from Quixel, also, that I sculpted into the rough shape of a cave. 
at least for the front and interior, the back, like, isn't. The trees are the same trees as the forest shots, and they're just cloned in onto a plane below the geometry. And then the cave is mostly empty, except for the crystal, which I also sculpted in Forger, and the characters. The magic effects in all of the shots were made with Cinema 40's pyro tools, and this tutorial from Arn Rabinowitz was helpful for figuring out some of the details of the look that I wanted. The base of all of them is a sphere that I keyframed the position on to move very fast, and then I added a lot of turbulence to make the smoke more interesting. The sim settings were mostly default, but with a smaller voxel size and a couple of settings tweaked. I also turned off temperature, or the fire, for all of the main character's magic. The enemy character still has it on. I hope you found this informative, and part 2 focusing on materials and rendering will be out soon.